Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are here in the third class of superconductivity according to BSc program of uh, for honors. Uh, in the last two classes, we discussed uh, how the superconductor how the superconductor works, what are they, uh, what are the conditions for them. Uh, we talked about two conditions of uh, having resistivity zero and the Meissner effect or Meissner condition that a superconductor should be a perfectly diamagnetic system. Then we saw that uh, Maxwell's third equation is not working here. And then we talk about some critical field type 1, type 2, all those things in the last two classes, which you can get in the earlier classes of, from my channel, YouTube channel. So today we'll talk about uh, two things. Uh, first is the London equation, the der der derivation of the London equation and what it implies physically. And the second is little, little knowledge about Cooper pair. Okay. So, first of all, we'll try to find out a relation or, in fact, I can say we are trying to uh, find out the reason that why magnetic fields are expelled in superconductors. Okay, so here, in the first part, what we have done, at, in the first line, I have written at T less than Tc, and n is equal to ns, where n means the concentration of electrons or the charge carriers, ns means the super electrons. So when the temperature is less than or equal to a critical temperature, then all the electrons become super electrons. So now we know that uh, force means the ma is equals to qe. Okay. So if I write in vector form, I will write m dv dt divided by equals to uh, electrons charge is minus we'll use the minus signs in vector equation and the electric field which you can get in equation number one now from drift velocity formula drift current we know i is equals to nea vd where vd is the drift velocity so that means if i need to write uh, current density then j will be is equals to concentration charge Drip velocity. Okay, drip velocity. So here the drip velocity is used as Vs in the earlier equation. So the J will become vector sign. So J will become concentration of uh, super electrons. The charge in the vector equation, you will put a minus sign in front. Then you have this uh, drip velocity, which I am showing as Vs for the super electrons. Now if I take the first differentiation with respect to time of this equation, I will get this. Since uh, I'm considering that its number of electrons will not change with time, so super electrons, sorry, will not change with time, so we'll have this. Or if I use the equation number one, if I put in place of dB dBs dt, if I use this equation, I will get this kind of thing: dJ dt is equals to ns e squared by m e. Now this is known as London's first equation. Now this equation establishes a relation between the current density and the electric field. Okay. Now, if the electric field is zero, if E is equal to zero, then what will happen? Then we will get dJ dt will be zero. That means the current density cannot change with time. That's what we have earlier known that even if you switch off the potential from outside, the current moving in the superconductor will move like that for millions of years because the current density cannot change with time. That is equal to zero. Okay, if you remove E, there will be current density which was earlierly present. Okay, the first thing is done. This is the London first equation which is established relation between uh, your current density and the electric field. Now, what we'll do? We'll take the curl of this equation number two. Okay, del cross here, del cross dz dt is equal to, we'll take the curl in both sides. And I can write dt outside and del cross the inside. Then in place of del cross e, we can use the Maxwell's third equation, which says del cross e is equal to minus db dt. Now remember, I'm deriving these equations in SI, okay. In some book, you might get the relations or the derivation in CGS system. In CGS systems, things are a little different. Different means you will somewhere you will have 1 by C, 
for example this maxwell's third equation will become 1 by c db dt okay c is right velocity so somewhere you get 4 pi for so if you derive in cgs the form will be same but the terms will be different but if you de i am deriving it in si so let us do in si which i find is a little better to do okay so okay we put from actual third equation we bring uh, minus divinity here we got this and you take this uh, this term in the bring it to left hand side to get it in common okay from there we get del cross j curl of j is equals to minus of n s e square by m into b sorry i forgot to give a vector sign above this b okay this is known as london's second equation and here you have established a relation between the current density and the magnetic field okay we are separating the electric and magnetic field for superconductors first we establish a relation between current density and electric field in the second equation we establish a relation between current density and the magnetic field now we can go ahead with the equation 2 sorry equation number 3 the london second equation okay we'll use this equation somewhere in the next page uh here from ampere circuit law what we know we know del cross b is equals to mu not j again i am using this equation in cg sorry si system in cgs it would have been different okay or you can say this equation is the maxwell's fourth equation without that uh, displacement current part okay so if i take the curl in the both side what i'll get okay this then del cross del cross uh, suppose something suppose uh, b here we are using b this thing the answer is means uh, the formula is first you'll write del del dot b then minus del square b which we have done here okay now del dot b the f this part is zero because of maxwell's second equation okay because of maxwell's second equation sorry the page uh, is uh, removed okay because of maxwell's second equation the del dot b is equals to zero so that means what i get this now this del cross j value has come from equation number 3 means the london second equation this this value is used here okay this del cross j value is used here ultimately what you got del 2b is equals to here and is e square mu not by m b or if i write del 2b is equals to this b divided by some constant lambda l square because see n is is a constant thing charge permeability mass all are constant thing so i'm just writing b divided by lambda l square where lambda l i'm defining it like root over m by n s b not e square now what is lambda l this lambda l is known as london penetration depth okay now i think most of you know how to solve uh, differential equation second order differential equation so if you look at this last line here you get del 2b you we get del 2b then what we have equals to b by lambda l square or i can write minus b by lambda l square equals to 0 isn't it i'm just omitting the vector sign you can use that the signs are there already okay if you solve this kind of equation then you get a solution like this b is equals to b not e to the power minus x by lambda l i'm solving this for x direction means d to b by dx2 okay if you solve you'll get this thing kind of a thing where b not represents now we will we'll understand the whole equation what it implies i think you have studied the electromagnetic electrodynamics uh there the thing called skin effect when the electromagnetic waves pass through a metal what happens you get their skin depth you know so to a particular value the electromagnetic waves can enter the metal after that it will be reflected back okay so that's why you can see your face on the mirror okay so the same kind of thing happens here what exactly happens this lambda l if you check the dimension here 
you will get a dimension of a length means it is representing some kind of a length that's why its name is london penetration depth the penetration depth comes from suppose this is x direction we have a superconducting surface okay the surface is placed like this and i am applying a magnetic field in the z direction this is z direction now means like this like this the magnetic field is applied now i want to check how much magnetic field is induced inside the superconductor so according to this formula if you see the magnetic field along z direction na applied so it will goes like this e to the power minus x by lambda l that means as you increase the value of x the b inside the superconductor will decrease that means we'll get a scenario like this at the surface it will be maximum then it will decrease decrease and go like that okay the magnetic field or the flux inside the superconductor will decrease like that so what is the uh, london penetration depth london penetration depth is that value of flux or the magnetic field induced in a superconductor at which the value of b becomes 1 by e of b not means at b at b not means this the part x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 the magnetic flux is maximum now london penetration depth is that value of length or that value in the x axis at which this b value this b value inside a superconductor inside superconductor will become 1 by e times of the value at the surface that is known as london penetration depth okay this is london penetration depth and this explains the meissner effect that why the magnetic field which was already present inside the superconductor above tc somehow disappear when the system become a superconductor from normal conductor to superconductor transition why the magnetic flux suddenly drops and this gives the reason for that okay i hope the i have you have understood the london first and second equation the little derivation we did using the second equation of london which says us that, that magnetic flux do penetrate the system and they penetrate to a certain limit and we know that one uh, limit known as london penetration depth which means the value becomes 1 by e of the at the surface okay so that's how the magnetic field inside the superconductor varies okay now we'll talk about the cooper pair what is the cooper pair okay suppose we have a solid system okay we have a periodic solid system okay we have atom here suppose and here you all know what crystal that's why you are uh, studying about semi superconductors it's in your syllabus the conductor matter physics suppose this is a solid means a crystal these are the basis point where the atoms are situated so it's become a crystal now suppose sodium chloride for example that means one will be sodium plus and one will be chlorine minus for example now if an electron a moving electron enters this system now for a pure crystal the electron can easily move here and there because all the atoms will be there in the respective positions so the electron will move with freedom so suppose the electron is moving here now since this electron carries a negative charge and these ions carries either plus or minus that means the moment the electron enters the system if this is the plus this is the plus ion then somehow this will attract a little towards the electron okay since the mass since the inertia of the ions will not allow them to go towards the electron but still they will be deflected from their own position by a small margin similarly this if it is negative it will go little back little back okay just the distortion small distortion so in that way the electron moves away from here okay or suppose the electron reach here last point and this uh, at ions have been distorted a little 
Now when the second electron come to the system, it will not get the pure crystal form. It will get a little distorted form of crystal where the ions are not its own place. Okay. And when you have a little distortion in the system, that means you have a phonon. Okay. Phonon in the system. Because if you increase the temperature, same thing will happen. The atoms will be displaced from their own position. They will create a phonon, which I have discussed in the first class. Okay. So that electron will not have the pure crystal form. So the path will be not same as the first electron. Okay. So that electron will be affected by the distortion or the phonon created by the first electron. This means this first electron has an impact on the second electron via distortion or you can say via phonon. This combination is known as Cooper pair. And in a superconductor, the superconductivity will exist <coughs> as long as this Cooper pair exists. The moment you break the Cooper pair, that means the superconductivity is vanished. That means to make a Cooper pair, you need some kind of energy. And that energy is known as binding energy of superconductor. See, you have a, you have a band gap in semiconductor to excite an electron from top of the valence band to bottom of the conduction. It's a different thing. But here in the superconductor, that band gap is the amount of energy to construct the Cooper pair. Or in other way, that band gap, if you want to destroy, that means you have to apply that much of energy so that you can destroy this Cooper pair or the linkage between them and get the normal conductor from the superconductor. So how this Cooper pair form? First electron will enter the crystal, somehow distort the atom, one of the atoms, even at t is equal to 0 Kelvin, where there is no temperature to give any kind of distortion system. Even at that temperature, the electron will move and the ions will move a little bit here and there, create a small phonon. That phonon will interact with the electron and the second electron will not have the same part as the first electron. That means this first electron has given a distorted part to the second electron. That means they are related by a distortion. So this electron phonon electron or electron distortion electron, this combination is known as Cooper pair. This is the only, only place where two electrons we say the two electrons are linked and they are attracted by each other. Okay, attracted means not a Coulomb attraction. It's not mean that they are attracted by a Coulomb attraction, no. But via phonon, they are linked. And that may be the... Uh, and that is not me. That is the case why we get superconductivity. So it's about how much Cooper pair you can form and how long they are related. Okay, so in uh, type 1 superconductor, the in the pure form of superconductor means that this uh, distance by which this Cooper pair forms is, this is known as coherence length. So this coherence length is very large, uh, but in uh, type 2 it's small. Okay, so today we'll, uh, today we have discussed the Today we have discussed about uh, London's first equation where the current density in a superconductor is linked with the electric field. In the London's second equation, we got a relation between the current density in superconductor with the magnetic field. Then the extension of the second equation using Ampere circuit law or the Maxwell's fourth equation without a displacement current part <coughs> lead to us a kind of a differential equation in B which we, if we solve, we get this kind of a solution where lambda L is known as the penetration depth, London penetration depth and lambda L is equal to this, root over M by this one. Okay. And what is this lambda L? It is the value of X at which the magnetic flux inside the superconductor becomes 1 by E times at the B naught, means at the surface value. And then we discussed about the Cooper pair, how the Cooper pair forms and how they are correlated. Okay. So that's what it is inside the BSc syllabus that we have in De Brugger University. Uh, I hope you like the classes. Okay. Uh, I'll give you one uh, additional formula that will might you get some problems in here in the entrance examination that will help. 
the, pen, the variation of penetration depth with the temperature. So lambda LT means the penetration depth at temperature T is given by penetration depth at T is equal to 0 Kelvin 1 minus T by Tc to the power 4 whole to the power minus half. Well, lambda LT is the London penetration depth at temperature T Kelvin. Lambda uh, London penetration lambda L0 means London penetration depth at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. Okay. And the T and Tc you know is critical temperature and T is the temperature you use here. This gives you the relation between at T is equal to 0 and, and at any higher temperature for London penetration depth. So that's all what we have in this uh, BSc syllabus of Deirugo University. Hope you like the classes and the superconductivity part is over. Do comment. If you are not liking the video, do tell me what's the reason that you are not liking the video apart from this technical glitch that we have that I am using in the mobile phone. Uh, apart from that, if you are not liking the explanation, do tell me where I am wrong. What did you want to know more? So I am expecting some kind of comments from you and if you are liking it, do like it and subscribe my channel. We will come with some new videos within a week. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. Good luck.